Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing another modding video, but we're not going to be talking about Diablo 3, we're not going to be talking about Diablo 2, no, 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 we're going to be modding Diablo 1, the original. We're going to be taking it and modernizing many elements of it, bringing it basically up to Diablo 2 level. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modernizing it in a way that new people can enjoy it from the start, and people who've played it before can enjoy brand new content. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be going over two mods today. They are mutually exclusive, meaning you're going to want one or the other. Basically, the first one I'm going to list is bringing Diablo up to Diablo 2 level. The second mod I'm going to be talking about is a hardcore mod when you want to take Diablo 1 to its most utter extreme. Step one, I suspect for most people, will be putting the CD in their drive and installing it. Hey, remember the good old days when games would let you sign up for the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Most people will see this play Diablo or install Diablo and then under it install Diablo spawn. Under no circumstances do you want to install the spawn. It is a limited version of the game that allows you to install the CD version on one computer and then the spawn on a bunch of other computers so that everyone can play together. It was a concept where they didn't nickel and dime you for each copy. Unfortunately, the spawn only allowed you to play the warrior, and it was just a limited version of the game. It wasn't very good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to install Diablo the normal way, and then, after Diablo has installed, this is important, access your CD-ROM drive where Diablo is stored, and go ahead and grab that diablo.dat.mpq file and just copy it into where you installed Diablo. It should be in the main Diablo directory. This is all the information that the CD normally holds, but we're dumping it into your Diablo directory so a CD isn't necessary. Next, go to the Diablo HD mod website. That is Diablo, the number one, ovh.org. I will have a link to that in the video description. Keep in mind that the link is subject to change. As you can see right here in the news, it has changed recently. So uh, you may need to do a Google search to find it, have the website changed. Either way, go to Downloads right there and download the main game right there. It's a small installer, simply 32 megabytes. Extract all the files from that archive into your Diablo directory, the same place you copied the Diablo.dat.mpq file. You'll see a brand new program with the exact same icon as Diablo called Beelzebub.exe. Go ahead and run that. You'll notice that Warrior, Rogue, and Sorcerer make their return and added the Barbarian, Necromancer, and Assassin classes. You'll note that the Monk class from Diablo 1's expansion, Hellfire, was not provided with this, and it was a fairly buggy class to begin with. A bit of Diablo lore, if you want what you do to be canon, you need to name yourself Aiden, because that's the guy who killed Diablo in the lore. You'll notice now there's not only a list of shortcuts, but a lot of good information available. If you hit Escape while in-game, you'll be able to access the video options where you'll be able to set the resolution, the frames per second, and full screen mode. A lot of functions in-game had a complete overhaul, such as the menu system here, as well as the character sheet, all kinds of information, attack to hit. You'll notice that you have a list of skills, not just one, but several available to your class. Now clicking on this little arrow in the corner right here where it says settings, you'll have access to combat info text, shake, play movies, monster hit effects, you can increase the speed you walk in towns, this won't affect out of towns, but say if I want to increase it to 100% walk in towns, now I'm moving a little bit faster, it's a little more bearable now. And you can turn full monster descriptions on and off. Now the author does have plans for a crafting system, as you can see the crafting menu is there. When a quest is available, you'll notice that there is an exclamation point over the person's head. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. Whoa! What can I do for you? You notice that the trade and barter system has undergone an overhaul, and the character item menu is much better than it used to be. In addition, characters can hold a primary weapon and a secondary weapon set just like in Diablo 2. Now you'll notice two chests in town. One is a private stash. This has 10 stash tabs, meaning that as far as carrying stuff goes, you don't really have to worry about it. 
In addition, you have a trade stash that is shared among all the characters on your, I want to say account, but it's really on your computer. Geed can both trade and gamble, just like in Diablo 2. You'll notice that each stage of the dungeon has its own waypoint now, where you'll be able to activate the waypoints and teleport between them, just like Diablo 2. Now, all of Diablo 1's main quest is intact, and you'll be able to start just from scratch, go all the way through and beat the game, but then there's more content after that. Pain isn't what he says. Adria the Witch sells all kinds of brand new stuff, from staves to spell tomes she'll refresh you for free so say i sense a up soul some mana, insert. just click on refreshment and she'll heal you up. your death will be avenged the sanctity of this place has been fouled now it still has the same kind of scaling where you can be over leveled for certain areas under leveled for others but in general you'll find that the beginning of the game is a little bit easier than it used to be and the middle and end is a lot harder than it used to be. Leveling up is pretty straightforward. It'll give you a little plus here. You click it to distribute your points. And under general, you're given basically the same options you always had in Diablo 2. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Don't meet the requirements for a specific skill book, just throw it in your stash, no problem. Now, very important, at your first opportunity, you're going to want to get a belt. Once you equip the belt, you'll notice that your potions move up like Diablo 2 did. Meaning that if I were to put a potion here, say on slot 4, if I use the potion on slot 4, the one above it will replace it. I saw what Farnham calls the Butcher! But just going down the list of items, you can see there's new sets, there's all kinds of gameplay changes, including brand new areas to go to. However, the version that we downloaded was only for single player. Back on the download page, right underneath the main HD version, you'll see a Project Tether. What this does is it's the multiplayer version of it, more or less. And the idea is, is that you can use that to play online with your friends. It, it's in early alpha for a reason. And for the most part, this is a single player experience. Now, if you decide you absolutely got to play this in multiplayer, then what you do is you go to the multiplayer option right there and it'll explain how to do it. You basically have to configure your Windows firewall to make an exception for it. Then you need to know the IP address of the person who's hosting the server. And it's pretty easy to do. Also, Hamachi would work, but I rarely recommend Hamachi for most people unless they absolutely have no other alternative. This mod is very much a work in progress, but it is leaps and bounds beyond normal Diablo 1 and is very close to being Diablo 2. However, if you're looking for a project that's more complete and you're looking for a hardcore experience where it's very brutal, very difficult, I recommend checking out a mod called Diablo The Hell. And you can find that on www.moddb.com forward slash mods forward slash Diablo dash the dash hell. And Diablo the Hell, I will also have a link to it in the video description, although it'll be a little further down. Basically, what you got here is just a an extremely difficult version of the game where it's actually oriented toward multiplayer. If you want to play with your friends, it's still going to be very difficult. The idea is, you know, normal, nightmare, and then hell. Well, now there's a new difficulty called Doom. Hard as hell, definitely fun to play, but it doesn't have nearly as many features as the previous mod. Now, unlike the previous mod, this runs off an installer. Now, for the hell, instead of directly installing it into your Diablo directory, it's recommended you instead do forward slash and the hell, basically putting it into a subdirectory so it doesn't mess with your main Diablo installation. Now, after you do select the directory it goes into, next we need the MPQ folder. This should be your main Diablo directory if you followed the step and copied the file from your CD-ROM correctly. Note that if you try to install the hell without this file, and it does somehow install, the game will crash instantly from then on. Now, let's assume for an instant that for whatever reason you cannot get the hell to start. 
you know, it crashes when you try to start it up. It says TH has stopped working. Most often it's due to DEP, that's Data Execution Prevention. It is a special security feature within Windows that, uh, depending on your computer setup, may or may not be causing issues. There are two ways to go about fixing that. First, go ahead and right click on My Computer, go to Properties, then go to System Properties. Under System Properties, you're going to want to go under Performance, go click Settings, and then under DEP, you can either turn DEP off entirely, which I don't recommend. Instead, I recommend going clicking Add and add the hell and TH to the exceptions list to where it simply ignores DEP protocols when running that specific program but it leaves the rest of your computer's processes nice and secure. Now unlike the previous mod the hell has a more standardized interface if you say go to your inventory it's gonna look like once again Diablo 1. If you try to say go to your character sheet it's just a simple standard sheet there are no differentiating um, panels between skills and spells. A lot of the extra content simply isn't there in the hell. You see, whereas the previous mod tried to modernize Diablo, the hell keeps things as close to Diablo 1 as possible while enhancing the difficulty and adding basically uh, new areas and uh, monsters to fight. On the Hell's Max difficulty, Doom, you can expect to play for about several months without actually beating the game. That's how difficult it is. Now one feature it does add is if you go to Setup, you will be able to switch between walking and jogging. And jogging is simply what the other mod did, where it increases your run speed in town. Now as for buying and selling, quote unquote, the stash is handled through the barmaid here. Good day! How may I serve you? What she will do is you can basically deposit items with her, and then you can take those items back later. And it's handled through the standard interface, not the updated Diablo 2 one that the previous mod used. Where the barmaid's house used to be, now Adria has set up at the entrance to the dungeon. Now one feature that was added was weapon swapping to where you can have a separate set of weapons and switch between them. It isn't as fluid as the other mod, but it is there and it functionally works. When a monster aggro's on you, it will say in battle. The difficulty really is there even on the easier difficulty levels. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. You'll often have to run away from enemies. You can see the glowing enemy is a special version of him, more or less a mini boss. I can't get there from here. Now another function of being in battle is that you're unable to go between one area and another when you're actually quote unquote in battle. That's what stops you from area transition cheesing to where you, you think you're about to die. Okay, you're gonna leave. Can't do that in this. They, it, completely restricts you from travel until you've defeated the enemy. Meaning that going down to a lower level could be hazardous to your health. Now unlike the previous mod, this is tested for multiplayer. So you won't have any troubles getting on Battle.net, joining with other people who are playing the Hell. Also currently in production there is the Hell 2, which will be in private testing for some time. But when it does come out, People are really looking forward to it. But if I personally had to choose between one mod or the other, I would probably choose the first of the two mods over the hell. And the reason is because all of the added options, the uh, user interface, everything is so much cleaner and more friendly. And that's really what I look for is modernizing the game, not so much making it brutally difficult. I don't hearken back to the good old days back when I used to play Diablo. Um, when I w had the opportunity to move up to Diablo 2, I enjoyed Diablo 2 mainly because of those user interface elements and whatnot. There's a little bit of nostalgia in going back to playing Diablo 1 and its older mechanics, but honestly, if I have the opportunity to improve the mechanics, I'm going to improve the mechanics every single time. And 
the added difficulty of the hell just exacerbates the issues that I had with the game to begin with, with the user interface being the way it is. In short, the Hell 2 has a lot of potential if Beelzebub, which is the code name for that first mod, the HD project, if it is able to surpass Beelzebub in terms of the interface, the presentation, just the way all those added features are. If it's able to do better than that, then I will gladly adopt the Hell 2. However, for now, Beelzebub has my vote as the better of the two. But I can't stress this enough, both have their own place. So, for those of you who want the better user interface but don't want the supreme difficulty, go with Beelzebub. Those of you who want the extreme difficulty but don't care so much about the interface, go with the hell.